In this video, we're going to be discussing Fleming's left hand rule, and we're going to be analyzing three circuits under the influence of a magnetic field. So for most of you, you're right handed. So this works out nicely. So you do not have to set your pen or pencil down as you're working these problems and you just get to use your left hand, your thumb, your pointer finger and your middle finger. If you're left-handed, then keep in mind your strategy is to place your pen or pencil down and then make sure you use the correct hand. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is we have three different circuits here. So I'm gonna draw in my magnetic field so we know that it flows from north to south. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw those in. Secondly, the next thing I'm going to draw is I'm going to add in the current. So Fleming's left hand rule has our pointer finger pointing in the direction of the conventional current. So this is the positive end of my battery here. So it's flowing in this direction. And then for this one, the wire goes into the screen. So it's going deeper into the screen to the right out of the screen and then towards the left. So basically just going around um, sort of in a clockwise direction. And then this one, it's gonna go around, up around this loop, and then back to the negative terminal of the battery. All right, so we have our magnetic fields taken care of. Um, those are the ones that are in green and we want to make sure that our left middle finger is lined up with those. And then we have our red arrows to match up with our current or the velocity of the charges. And then our thumb is going to tell us the direction of the force. So let's go ahead and try the first one. So we're just focusing on this piece of wire over here. Um, if we were to place that magnet in different orientations in different parts of the circuit, it would influence in different ways. So we're just taking a look at this purple wire that is running from left to right. And if we line up our middle finger towards the bottom of the screen, that lines up with our green arrows, which is our magnetic field. And then with your left hand, naturally your pointer finger does actually go to the right with these red arrows, which means that your thumb is pointing out of the screen. So the force applied would push the wire up and out of the screen. Now for our next one, keep in mind, although my drawing isn't great that the wire is going into the screen over here. So let's go ahead and place our fingers um, just like the diagram shows over here and that we have our fingers perpendicular to one another. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure my middle finger is pointing to the left of the screen, which is a little bit tricky. Um, but it turns out um, that now we want to twist our hand so that our pointer finger is going, remember, it's going into the screen. Okay, so when I do that, it is a little bit tricky. I feel like I'm kind of twisting my arm a bit but I have my pointer finger into the screen and then I have my middle finger pointed to the left. And then that makes my thumb point in the downward direction. Okay. Again, as I take my left hand and then I point my pointer finger into the screen and then I twist my hand so that my middle finger is going towards the left. It is a little bit awkward, but my thumb is pointing downward then. And like I said, it kind of feels like someone is like twisting your arm towards inward towards your body for that case. All right. Now the last one, we have a loop here that's affected by a magnetic field. So we're going to look at it in a couple different spots. So what you do is first line up your middle finger with the magnetic field, with the green magnetic field. Okay. If you naturally line up your left hand with the green magnetic field and your middle finger is pointing to the right of the screen, you notice that your pointer finger is pointing up. It can only possibly point up, in, out, or down, okay? But it can't point right or left, okay? So let me repeat that one more time. So if you have your middle finger pointing to the right, you can't possibly rotate your 
pointer finger to be pointing right or left. So in that case, any current that's going right or left will not experience a magnetic force, which means that this portion of the wire here and these portions of the wire here have a current that's running parallel to the magnetic field, those will not experience any force. So we wanna focus on this portion of it that's going up and this portion of it that's going down. Okay, so look, with that being said, keeping my middle finger pointed to the right and then directing my pointer finger up, then my thumb is going out of the page on this side or out of the screen. Now for the other part, it's a, it's a little bit awkward. So I have my screen on my desk in front of me and I'm gonna keep my middle finger pointed towards the right. And then I'm gonna rotate my hand so my thumb starts slowly moving more and more away from me until I'm basically pointing at myself, which I can't do that completely all the way without twisting my body. And then my thumb would be going into the page. That one's probably the trickiest one, trickiest one to maneuver, which means that the loop is being pushed out on this end and then in on this end, which means that overall it would basically be rotating around this way because it's pushed out of the screen over here and then into the screen over there. So they basically work together to rotate that loop. So as you're using Fleming's left hand rule, um, you wanna make sure your finger is tightly locked into that position. As I said, if you're a righty, you can go ahead and keep your pen or pencil in your right hand and then work out the problems with your left. If you're a lefty, make sure you set your pen or pencil down and then proceed with the left hand rule. I would draw in as much as possible in your diagram before proceeding to find what happens to the force. So as I did with red for the currents and then with green for the magnetic fields, and then that way all of your arrows are all set up for you. So then all you have to do is then maneuver your left hand in the proper directions. Remember, if you have some stuff running parallel to each other, you might not have any force. In this case, we pretty much had forces on every part besides these parallel portions of our wire, which were right over here and basically the bottom portion right over there. Other than that, um, we did have a magnetic force acting on a few different areas for that loop and then in a single direction for our wires for the first and second circuit. So I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.